You might have already seen this yacht. But even if you haven't, you can guess where it was designed and built just by looking at the lines. It's a lovely example of an Italian sport cruiser, Azimut Bonetti's Atlantis 50. It's been designed using well-known and established styles, which makes it modern across the ages, contemporary and beautiful. It has a long bridge at the bow that shows how sporty it is, and it's also very tapered. In fact, 16 metres long and a little wider than 4, the block coefficient coming in at 0.26, Lines and shapes are fantastic. Look how the roof rests on the side window. A coupe can't do any less than having a very large sun deck at the bow and stern where the cockpit turns out to be very versatile. With the French doors at the stern, the living area can be climatized and protected from the bad weather. This is the coupe model, but they also make an open version that has an even longer sofa. The platform is perfect for a jet ski, which could be the ideal tender for this type of boat. Or if you want, there's space for a 2.4 metre dinghy. It's furnished in a fresh, sunny Mediterranean style. Light colours and shapes make it very pleasant. The living area in the open model can be converted into a sun deck. The objective of this boat is very clear. The light descends below deck through this transparent oblong and in the open version there's a fantastic chaise lounge. The VIP cabin at the bow is very light and airy, and even though the couches are constricted by the width of the boat, they are as wide as the double beds at home. A double cabin has bunk beds, but it can also be a living area for four people. And the captain's quarters? One of the best on offer for 50-footer. It's in the center of the boat, and there's lots of space for baggage. Four wardrobes, two chests, two hanging spaces, two bedside tables, a storage locker under the bed and a chest of drawers under the TV. Finished in the best cotton and eco leather textiles with furniture is precious lacquered walnut. The bathrooms are finished in the same style and there's a separate shower. Below deck there's the kitchen with four ceramic hobs, corian top, microwave and a 215 litre fridge. The command deck is very ergonomic, so you can drive comfortably sitting down, with a nice breeze blowing through the sliding window. Very useful when you're mooring too. Two 600 horsepower, 8,300 cubic centimeter QSC Cummins turbo diesel models were used, the power being linked to a trustworthy axis. It's not that powerful a boat, but I wouldn't say there's a fault. It means they know how to get the best out of every horsepower. How? To start with, in how they built it, only the best, in vacuum-infused vinyl styrene resin. The hull is narrow and deep where it should be at the bow and central areas. At the stern, the angle of the hull never goes below 15 degrees. The shape of the boat is directly proportioned to its speed. Well, that's where they study, isn't it? A more flat hull wouldn't be good in choppy waters. A deeper one would absorb more energy and would roll more. It's better to optimize the water lines to cruising speed. But can anyone drive this boat? Or does one need lots of experience? Let's see what happens when I put my foot down. This is the minimum planing speed, 11.4 knots, even going against the waves comfortably, even though they're pretty high. It's the best speed though. Maybe in these conditions, yes, but not if the sea was calm.
Azimut ha fatto un buon lavoro. Azimut has done a good job optimizing the performance and consumption of this boat, keeping check on the weight and power. And what does the driver need to do? Just pick the right speed to sail at. Engines at 2,000 revs, but perfectly relaxed. You could sail for hours like this. Speed, 18 knots. Consumption is at about 45 litres an hour in difficult conditions going up against the sea. Heading in this direction with the waves and the wind head on, it's better to keep the flaps a little low, so you reduce the pitch. But now, we're going to sail across the current. The boat responds very well to commands that are set by the flaps. It reacts very positively, which allows you to stabilize it. Even when the elements are coming side on, stop drifting so much and speed up a little to push it, even in these conditions. The engines are revving faster and consumption is going up and we're going 32 knots. Not bad, eh? And look at the waves. Soft landings always. Crossing is perfect. We're just about to sail with the sea behind and see what happens. So now we don't just need to keep check on the height of the waves, but how strong they are too. How fast. And the flaps? Well, better take them off, as if we're about to go fast. I'm not doing badly, even considering these waves from the side. The boat isn't locking up at all. And the bow holds well, even in water, at above 30 knots. I'm not feeling the impact as the V at the bow is so sharp. This is an ideal speed, 25 knots. Engines going at 2,200 revs a minute, consumption between 55 and 60 litres an hour for each engine. The Atlantis 50 is a brilliant boat as well as a very interesting product, as it's perfectly homogenous, which means everything has been thought about in an intelligent way, space, luxury, the horsepower. I really want to pay my compliments to the people who put this boat together, even if I don't know some of the names of the stylists. I really like Neo Design. And one last piece of information, the price. It costs about 600,000 euros, a little less if you buy the open version, a little more if you want the full optional coupe version. But it's worth it.